Welcome to the Jamaran class frigate ship brief. All right, where to start with this thing? Uh, this ship is the backbone of the Iranian Navy. And I suppose that we should begin by discussing that Iran has two navies. They have the Iranian Navy, which is a more conventional force. And they also have the uh, Iranian Republican Guard force. Those are the ones that go around on the small boats with the RPG launchers and machine guns and capture tankers and all that. That's a completely separate force from what we're talking about today. We're talking today about the actual Iranian Navy that has a traditional Navy mission of defend the nation from the sea and uh, guard the coastlines and whatnot. So the Jamarian class frigate is operated by the Islamic Republic of the Iranian Navy, or the IRIN, and consists of four vessels that are built domestically between uh, 2007 and 2021. Uh, the Jamarian class frigates are significant in advancement. Uh, this is the most modern ship that they run, but they keep the ship up to date by reverse engineering uh, a lot of technology. Like they still have from the 1970s, some American technology that Iran was using back when they had friendly relations with the United States. Uh, so they've continued to try and manufacture 1970s level of systems, uh, as well as buying foreign systems from China and whatnot, like we'll talk about today, to upgrade and keep these ships modernized. For example, they shoot uh, the C-802 subsonic anti-ship missile. And they've also uh, reverse engineered to make that their own uh, called the Gadir, which has a little bit longer range of uh, 200 kilometers than the typical C-802 has of about 120 kilometers. They also shoot the SM-1, which is an American surface air missile, but certainly isn't the American surface. They're not buying them from America. They're simply reverse engineering the ones they had from the 1970s and making improvements on their own but it still looks and performs much like the SM-1 Block 5 does. Now, there are different weapon and sensor configurations on every one of these four vessels. So we're gonna go over those differences uh, in detail in this, in this lecture here, okay? And I should mention that there are three additional ships under construction, so they're not done building this class. Like I said, it is the backbone of the Iranian Navy. All right, so where are they built? Well, they're built in Bandar Abbas, and because Iran also has a shoreline on the Caspian Sea, they have a shipyard up in Bandar Anzali for their Caspian Sea fleet. So two fleets for Iran, Caspian Sea, and then the Blue Water Navy down in the Persian Gulf. All right, let's talk about weapons and differences here. So this ship is pretty well equipped has lots of weapons, as you can see here. Uh, the IN, IN, IR, correction, the IRIS Jemaran, uh, which is the lead ship, has four SM-1 uh, missiles. But the Dina has two uh, Menrab in its place. The third ship, the Sahand, has two Saivad and Saivad-3 uh, missiles. And there's a 24-cell launcher that's only on the lead ship there on the front. And what we're going to do is we're going to break down each one of these ships for you in this lecture so you can see the difference. But this is the lead ship you're looking at right now. These, these are the missiles that came with it. And for whatever reason, they did not build consistently uh, these weapon systems on every ship in this class. It was probably due to a lack of availability. But that's just speculation on my part at this point. Let's look at sensors real quick. So each ship also has a different sensor configuration. So we're looking at the Jamaran. This has the ASR 3D air search radar uh, and the DECA 1226 nav radar right there. But the Dina has the ASR 3D radar with uh, the DECA 1226 and a Samen radar, which is derived from the WM28. Now, don't let all these names and numbers confuse you. We're going to break all of this down. The big thing you want to take from this right now is that of the four ships constructed so far, even though they're the same class, have very different weapon and sensor configurations. So let's look at some of these differences. Let's begin at the top with the red bubble. Here we're comparing the lead ship Jam Jamaran with uh, the follow-on ship Dina. 
the red bubble, uh, Dina has uh, the semen uh, WM28 like radar there at the top. You can see it's a little round ball, right? Whereas the Jamaran has the older style radar. Let's move down to the weapon systems uh, in the green bubble on the bow there. The Jamaran has a 24 cell launcher, where the Dina has two uh, Emran uh, SAM surface to air missile launchers. If we look at the blue bubble, uh, this is the ASD 3D radar for the jam around there at the top. And look at where they put that 3D radar on the Dina. You know, it's a different location. And then finally, the yellow bubble. Here you can see the Jamaran has an SM1 launcher and the Dina does not. So it's hard to believe that these are all the same class, but they are. They're just wildly different configurations for each one. So here's the construction uh, list for you. These were originally laid down in 2004 and continue to be built today. As of right now, there are four active duty ones. Uh, and the ship has a bad reputation as being a cursed ship class because they've had some incredibly unfortunate and unlucky accidents. Uh, the first one we'll talk about uh, is the one that happened in 2018 where one sank in a storm in the Caspian Sea, but it was uh, refitted and refloated and so they did not lose uh, the Damavand. The Damavand was simply uh, blown off of its pier. They didn't get uh, navigation up in time. And they uh, were reportedly blown into a jetty that ripped a hole in the side of the ship. Uh, it was partially flooded and sunk and then refloated. And then finally, uh, one that's under construction right now, the Talier, uh, did accidentally fall off of its blocks. It overturned during construction. And uh, that is something that is very common if you're not careful when you're building these ships. Uh, the, the, the keel blocks are very finely balanced. And if you put too much weight on one side as you're building the ship than the other, they can fall off. So here's a picture of what happened to the dam event. As you can see, it was blown against that jetty there and those rocks just ripped that hull open like the Titanic and it sank, but it was so shallow, it couldn't be completely, be completely submerged. So they were able to repair it enough to refloat it and move it off the jetty back into um, the dry dock where they did a complete repair. And this ship is returned to service now. So it took them a long time to fix it, but they did. Uh, the IRIS Jemeran, the lead ship of this was conducting a live fire exercise in May of 2020. And they accidentally shot a support vessel that was participating in the live fire exercise. I believe it was the patrol ship that was keeping other traffic away from the live fire exercise and the missile after launch, which was the uh, C802, which is based on the Chinese design, locked onto that ship instead of the target barge and killed 19 people. Bit of a tragedy there. Also very unlucky, but they didn't follow proper, you know, range live fire procedures and this is what happens whenever you uh don't have you know a rigid routine of safety around these you know you don't see this happen in the united states uh exercises that without we do and that's because we have a strict set of rules that keeps everyone at a safe distance uh, clearly iran did not exercise those style of rules even if they have them they may not uh, in this exercise and there you can see the ship that fell off the blocks it's been under construction and continues to be under construction, uh, but it fell off the blocks in Bandar Abbas in 2021. Sadly, this did uh, kill a shipyard worker. So this is a cursed class. All right, so Jamron by the numbers has two or four diesels, uh, two shafts and bow thrusters can produce a 2,000, 20,000 rather horsepower. It's about 1,400 tons fully loaded can make 18 knots, which is reasonable for the amount of horsepower that they can generate with those diesel engines has four Nor C802 or C802 Alpha anti-ship missiles. And that's the main weapon here. This ship is designed to go out, detect aircraft and deal with it if it needs to. But carrying around these four anti-ship missiles is the purpose of this ship. It also has four standard SM1 Block 5 on the lead ship, uh, surface to air missiles. The other ships have different surface to air missiles more in, uh, in more domestically uh, produced uh, a three cell launcher for the Syed two or Syed three is on the on hall 74 uh, two Meharab is on hall 75 and a 24 cell launcher is on hall 76 
They have 76 millimeter main guns and a 140 millimeter or 30 millimeter uh, defensive gun there on the side. They also have 20 millimeter and 12.7 millimeter machine guns mounted port and starboard and uh, two 324 uh, millimeter torpedo tubes. Those are the pneumatically launched lightweight torpedoes that go out and uh, are anti-submarine torpedoes. They don't even see surface ships. They have a ceiling on them that whenever they launch them, they go down below that ceiling, whether it's 20, 30, 40 feet, it's variable, uh, and they'll never come back up above that so they can't hit a ship. But it'll, it'll look for a submarine in the vicinity and uh, you know find it and hit it if it can. Okay, so the AB212 helicopter doesn't have a, a hangar here, so they cannot store the helicopter, but the helicopter can land, bring supplies, bring troops, you know, and also provide support. So because of the no hangar um, problem, they have to stay within range of a helicopter facility if they want to use the helicopter, which means in effect, this is a coastal defense frigate, which serves the purpose of the Iranian Navy. They're not projecting power outside the Persian Gulf. They're patrolling the Caspian Sea. They're patrolling the Persian Gulf and into the Arabian Gulf a short distance, uh, but they don't, they don't need to go very far to achieve their goal. They also have on the sensor side, like I said, uh, the ASR 3D radar. That's on hull 75 and 76, uh, or the Peasley AWS on hull 74. They have the Rackle Deca uh, 1226 radar on hull 76, or the SPS 10, which is based on an American uh, retrofit or reverse engineering on hull 74. They have the uh, sea, fire, sea Hunter Fire Control Radar and the Samian uh, Fire Control on Hall 75. The Furunu Navigation Radars are common throughout the world. Those are actually commercially available, but it's not uncommon for uh, countries like Iran and even China to buy a Furuno radar and stick it on a warship. It's a very good navigation radar. Okay, so the DECA uh, RDL uh, A2AC uh, radar warning system it gives them a bearing and uh, power level, pulse rate, and other information of radars out there. The Rascal FH5 uh, high frequency and direction finding system uh, does the same thing. Uh, gives them a, a bearing to, to a radar. And finally, they have uh, the Mark V rocket flare launchers uh, so they can uh, illuminate and fire other things out of these launchers. Uh, to my understanding, this is not an ASW capable rocket. It's simply um, chaff flare and you know defensive rockets all right so now we're going to start breaking down these systems i've thrown a lot of names at you to this point and i understand that so here we're going to talk about them in detail let's begin with the main air search radar the asr 3d radar it's indigenous it is both passive electronically scanned and a uh, long-range radar mounted on hall 76 and 75 it operates in the s band which is the nato ef band two to four gigahertz uh, instrument range is out to just over 110 nautical miles uh, can be deployed on shore or ships and is a 360 degree radar can track uh, over 100 targets really but publicly 100 targets uh, it's been in use since 2013 and it's it may have been in service before that because that's this is just the first time we saw it operating was 2013 so that's not always the first time it's been used Let's move on to the other radar, the AWS-1 air surveillance radar. This one, um, this is the former radar of the Jamaran and is active on board Hull 74, the IRIS Sahand right now. Let's see, it's probably gonna be upgraded in the future to uh, the ASR 3D radar. This operates in the S-band as well, two to three uh, megahertz and has a range of about 75 nautical miles, a little bit less range than the previous radar. So we will expect this to be upgraded uh, eventually. Here's the Contravas Sea Hunter fire control system. Uh, it's the mainframe fire control system for uh, designating surface and air targets for the guns of 30 millimeters and above. It's on board the Jamaran and the Dina, which is hull 76 and 75. Uh, Field of view is six degrees, you know, it's kind of directional, uh, has lots of sensors, and uh, max range is 24 nautical miles. This is a fire control radar for directing, you know, guns and such. The same in FCS. Uh, this is uh, derived from the WM28 fire control system. Like I said, they're reverse engineering a lot of these older systems. 
uh, operates in the SNX band, is capable of tracking 40 surface targets and one air target. Um, not sure of that limitation, uh, but that's that's the public information out there. And this has a range of uh, 24 nautical miles out there, and that's that big egg shape radar on the top of Hall 74. Could be upgraded in the future as well. It really depends on you know the the time and the budget. How much money do they want to invest in these? It might be better, and this was what they appear to be doing, is just building new ships because we're going from four to seven of these, right? Three under construction. We'll probably have the newer ASR 3D radar instead of these older ones. All right, the SM surface to air missile. This should look very familiar to everybody that uh, is familiar with American systems because they basically uh, have kept the SM-1 alive by reverse engineering the old ones they had and building these this is the command guidance semi-active homing radar it's on board of the irs jamaran that's the lead ship only has a range of about 20 nautical miles 115 kilogram warhead uh, was inducted by iran in 1988 so as you can see it took them 10 years to figure this thing out uh, it does mach 2 has a solid propellant ignition and a ceiling of about about eighty-two thousand feet this is a surface air missile that will knock your plane down but being a very old uh design uh, modern evasion techniques can probably defeat this thing pretty easily um it's not as nearly as good as even the sm2 that we still operate in the united states navy we stopped operating the sm1 and its other variants years ago uh, and moved on to SM2, SM3. We even have a SM6 now. Anyway, but back to the Iranian Navy. Uh, they're operating these on their most capable ships, despite being 40 years old. Now, they haven't stopped developing their own systems. So this is important to understand. As much as we're going to talk about the accidents and mishaps and old equipment that they're reverse engineering, Iran is working with Russia and China to develop indigenous weapons. And this is one of them, the Syed-2, Syed-3 surface-to-air missile. It's a canister-launched missile. Uh, it's been reverse-engineered from the RIM-66 SM-1 and is mounted on the Sahan-74. And uh, range is somewhere between 60 and 120 kilometers. Okay, so we really don't know the range, but obviously the Syed-3 is probably 120 kilometers. All right, here's the C-802 NOR missile, indigenous development long-range anti-ship missile this has internal guidance as well as radar guided for terminal homing has a large 160 kilogram warhead with high explosive semi-armor piercing capability it's a sea skimmer uh it's subsonic has a range of about 65 miles this is very much a harpoon this is the chinese ripoff of our harpoon from the 1980s like the original mark one harpoon yeah the harpoon of today is very different, but this is the old school 1980s harpoon copied by China, sold to Iran, who then made their own version, and it's still only 65 nautical miles. But hey, it'll hit a ship if the ship doesn't evade. All right, sank the Moskva. Anyhow, uh, the C-802 uh, missile, this is an upgrade version of the NOR. This is the Alpha, the Gadir. Uh, this has the longer range, slightly larger warhead too, uh, more ECM resistant, but take that with a, you know, a pinch of salt there. There's, these are still uh, not as ECM resistant as today's standard is in the United States Navy anyway. It's really unfair to compare these, even China weapons to the American system, so I should not do that. But just keep everything in perspective. We're talking about essentially a developing country using Chinese reverse engineered or stolen IP to build their own version of these reverse engineered weapons. Uh, so they're never gonna be as good as the original. And they're decades behind anything the West has. All right, the 76 millimeter um, Fajar 27 gun. Uh, this is the unlicensed copied of the Italian 76 uh, Malrana gun which is a good gun. The Italian gun's really good. So if you're gonna copy one illegally, you might as well copy a good one. So good job for doing that. They didn't choose the Chinese copy that jams all the time. Has a fire rate of 85 rounds per minute uh, and has an elevation of nearly vertical. So this thing can be used de depending on the round against ships or airplanes, uh, which would mean that it would need a, uh, an airburst shell as well as a uh, high explosive shell. 
Here are the uh, point defense weapons. You can see the common gun, uh, very similar to the Russian design. Uh, yeah, it's an AK-630 clone. This is mounted on the Shahad, which is Hall 74. Has six barrels, 5,000 rounds per minute. Uh, has a range of uh, 8,000 yards or meters, uh, but effectively only out to 44,000. Uh, magazine capacity is 2,000. Now, we're going to go with that number. Just know that other variants of this style of weapon have a battery that can uh, reload it. But uh, this one, I believe it has the 2000 rounds just, just in the turret itself. And because it's point defense, if 2000 rounds doesn't do the job, you know, you're probably not going to have a chance to reload it anyway. And finally, the 40 millimeter fat gun, which is an unlicensed copy of the Bofors. Again, Bofors, excellent gun. The Bofors 40 millimeter L70, outstanding so again they're they're they're, they're copying good systems uh, just understand that these are not indigenous they did not come with up with these on their own uh, rate of fire is between 240 and 330 because you can do st several different settings and it's mounted on the jamaran uh, which is the lead ship hull 76 and the dina and there's the helicopter um since it's just a helicopter pad i suppose you could land any uh naval aviation helicopter you know medium size helicopter on it uh, these bells have been in uh, service since 1972, all the way back when the Shah of Iran was cool with the United States, and they managed to keep these old girls running. Uh, the Bell helicopter design is fantastic, and this is a testament to its design and construction. And as long as you maintain it, it'll, it'll run forever, it seems. Uh, speed's about 140 knots. Service ceiling's just over 16,000 feet. Uh, over 200 nautical mile range. Crew of two. Uh, weighs over... 6.2 uh, kilograms there, but just be aware that more than the Bell helicopter can operate on these ships because it's, it's literally just a helicopter landing pad for small and medium helicopters. All right, final thoughts on the Jamaran class. Like I said, it's the backbone of the Iranian Navy, and they actually do a really good job of coastal defense which is their primary. They don't harass shipping. They don't capture tankers. That is a different uh, branch of the army armed services that Iran has. Okay. Th these are real sailors with real, you know, traditional roles. Uh, all ships are built in Iran. It's all, you know, in indigenous, if you will, but they all have different configurations, which makes this a very difficult lecture to understand. And I, you know, I completely encourage you to go through uh, the slides that are provided as well as the photos so that you can see for yourself uh, how each ship is a little bit different. And not to mention, all the equipment is some form of reverse engineering of another system. So that adds to the complexity here. But uh, feel free to you know, listen to this lecture as many times as it takes to get a good idea of what's going on here. But this is the state of the Iranian Navy. Uh, th this is just how they operate. They're, they're doing what they can with limited resources. So the Iranian defense industry generally uses reverse engineering. Like I said, these ships represent the blue water capabilities of the Iranian Navy. Keep in mind, uh, this includes the Caspian Sea that is often not mentioned in the West. But obviously the countries that, including Russia, that border the Caspian Sea, it's very important for them. So let's keep an open mind about that. And finally, and I'm sure I'll get comments on this, so let's correct this now. Iran does call this ship a destroyer, but it's not. It's at best a light frigate. It's, it's a light frigate in build and size and in mission. Uh, but Iran um, wanting to make their ships sound more capable than they actually are, will call this a destroyer. So whenever you go onto the wiki page or whatever other public sources out there, you may see different um, d d descriptions of this, including the ship class. Um, Iran has its own indigenous name for this class. There, there's an Iranian name for it that's not Jamaran. But uh, NATO calls it Jamaran, and that's what we're sticking with to be consistent in this series is we're using NATO names. All right. And that, my friends, is uh, the latest on the Iranian Navy's most capable ship. It is a frigate, and uh, this is what she can do. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.